Hey, how you doing? We're going to make a picture frame uh, that's wall uh, hosted. So we're going to use a generic model wall host, uh, wall based. Okay. So when we've got that done, we're going to load into the model, and then we're going to create a decal, uh, which is uh, the tool for applying an image onto a surface, and we're going to put a photo into the picture into, into the picture frame. Okay. Uh, let's get started. Okay. So go to File and New Family. We're going to use the generic model. Uh, wall based family so that our picture frame is hosted on the wall. That's it there. And open. You can recategorize the category uh, from generic model to something like furniture or whatever you want up here. Family categories. I'm not going to bother. Okay, so get straight into it. So, reference planes on the create tab, create the reference planes for the width. Uh, let's actually you know what let's do that in the in the elevation and placement side okay uh create reference plane so the bottom bottom middle and top of our frame okay so let's give it some constraints use our dimension tool and dimension with both sides of the center and click equals and the same on the height each side of the center and equals and dimension the height, dimension the width, escape, escape. Select the width dimension and click on our button for create parameter and call, we'll call this canvas width, okay? Because our frame is gonna go on the outside of it. Okay. And canvas height, select this guy, that fella, canvas height. And okay, all right. Let's just change this to something we recognize, maybe an A4 size, 297 by 210. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and create the, do you know what? No, we'll, we'll create a parameter for uh, the depth of the canvas. Okay. So into reference level, create reference plane off the wall. And if you want to, you can pull that reference plane for the wall just, just off it so you can see it. Otherwise, you can just tab and find it, okay? So, dimension tool for new reference plane. Tab to find the reference plane that's on the wall. Okay, select this guy. New parameter, and we'll call it canvas depth. And okay. I'll change that to maybe 15 millimeters, okay? Uh, while I'm here, I'm just going to create the parameters for the, uh, the frame as well. So, for how many types? New parameter, frame width, I'll leave it as length and type, that's okay. New parameter, frame depth, again, leave it as length and type, okay. So frame depth, let's just say 20, so it's just a bit five more than the, the depth of the canvas and the width about, I don't know, 35, okay, and okay. So let's go back into our placement side elevation. Create extrusion. Now the reference plane we're on now is the center of the wall, so I'm going to adjust this afterwards. Um, let's just use our rectangle tool and go from opposing corners to sorry opposing corner to opposing corner, and then click on the lock for each side. And OK. And while that extrusion is selected, let's give it a material. Probably a little bit unnecessary because we're actually going to apply an image over it, but I'll do it anyway. So new parameter, canvas material. And leave it as uh, type, okay. Okay, so back into our reference level. And let's pull this out and lock it to our reference planes where we want it. Uh, use my align tool, lock selected, tab and find the reference plane, not the wall. You want to lock to the reference plane. Okay, the families just don't behave that well when you lock to geometry. Escape, escape. Okay, there it is. So back into the uh, placement side, we I'm just considering whether to to, to model the frame here or uh, with the constraints or import a profile. I'm going to import a profile. Now you could do a lot more with this, okay, with the profile. I mean, there's a picture frame like there's any number of profiles you could you could make. I'm going to make it really simple, just a rectangle, okay. So I'm going to use file, new, family. Uh, Metric profile. Uh, there we are. 
open. There's our XY planes. I'm going to create two more reference planes for constraints. One vertical, one horizontal. I'm going to dimension. That's my width of my frame. And this one is the depth of my frame. Okay, escape, escape. I'm going to select that dimension and click on create parameter. We call this one width. Everything else the same. And select this one and new parameter and call it depth. Okay. And create tab line uh, this time i'll just pick lines just be just to do it a different way okay pick line have lock selected and bing 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 then trim 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 trimity trim trim chirul. oops okay escape escape so you'll see that they're locked if you select one of the lines okay now that's done what you should do now obviously is you should save this and in the right place and you're folder for profiles and give it a proper name and all that stuff okay but i'm not going to bother i'm just going to load it in okay load in the project close family one okay do i want to save it i do not okay so if i go down to my families down here and profiles family two that's the one we just loaded in okay so i'm going to double click in there and i'm going to associate the depth and width parameter here with the one that we have in our family already that we created a few minutes ago okay so the depth I'm going to go over here and click on the little gray box and select from our parameters that we already created and uh, frame depth okay and the width i'm going to select the little box and frame width so now that the profile one profile type will change with the change in the in the, the family parameters okay all right so back into replacement side uh actually one other thing let's go back into reference plane Sorry, uh, uh, reference level. So, save this first, actually. Save as family. Uh, models, wall based. Uh, okay, picture frame. Save. Okay, so. Let's check and see what the name of that reference plane on the wall is, and we'll work off of that, okay? So if you select that reference plane on the face of the wall, it's called back, okay? So let's go back into our placement side elevation. Okay, we're going to create a sweep. Okay, I'm going to set the reference plane to that reference plane back. So name, drop down bo uh, box, back, and okay. Uh, back into the modified tab and sketch path uh, let's use the pick line tool okay and have a lock pre-selected so pick our reference planes all locked we'll use our trim to corners tool trim 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 trimity trim trim true okay now that's our that's our uh, uh, our profile there okay so if for whatever reason it's up here You'd be as well just grabbing that and pulling it down to one of the sides so you can see it in plan, okay? So go back into our modify tab and click OK. We'll go to our plan view and select profile. And we have that one we just loaded in there, family two, okay? Now it didn't come in exactly as I wanted, so I'm going to flip it and rotate it 90 degrees. Okay. There. And OK. And while it's selected there, I'm going to give it a, a material parameter, okay? So click in the box beside material, and new parameter, and we'll call it frame material. Okay, leave it as a type, and so on. Okay, okay. All right, so let's go back to placement side. There it is, okay? So we have our frame, we have our canvas, we have our height and width. Uh, we'll control the family from the, uh, the, the height above the level in, in the project, okay? So let's save that file, save as family. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, I already saved, I forgot. Uh, so just save. Uh, load into project and close. Okay, let's go to floor plan. So you see, it's we got that little circle with the line through it because it's a, it's a wall-mounted family. Okay, it'll only uh, it'll only place when we find a wall. Okay, 
So I'll just stick it there. There it is on the wall. And it's going to make it a uh, great little section through there, so we can we can look at it in elevation. Save escape, grab that section, clip it, and uh, to fine. Okay, double click on the head. There it is. So that's our uh, that, that, that's our sweep for our squirting board. Okay, we're set to elevation of level. Let's just make it I don't know a meter. Okay. And if you check that, your dimension tool, the bottom of the frame to the floor level, it's a meter. Okay. All right. Now I actually have Enscape open, so let's have a quick look at it. No, do you know what? First of all, I'll give the, the frame a material. Edit type, canvas frame material, and it'll find some wood material. Uh, okay, wood. Have. I don't know, that'll do. Hardwood. Okay. And okay. All right. Enscape tab. I'll resume live. And let's just throw that up on the screen. Okay. So let me go to the front door. And here. here it is on the wall. Okay. Now, there's no picture in it, obviously. Okay. So we'll go back and, and put the picture in and we look at it in here. So we'll minimize that and I'll pause Enscape again. Right, so the decal tool, that's what we're doing next. I'm going to pick your own photo or picture or whatever it is, you could post or whatever it is. Um, in the insert tab, uh, using decal, we have to create a type first, okay? So decal types, I'm going to create a new one. Uh, I'll call this kids photo, okay? okay? Now you have a bunch of controls here. I'm going to, first of all, find the image. I saved it there already, open. And you can control the brightness, reflectivity, transparency, and so on. Let's leave them as they are. High gloss finish, that's good enough for me at the moment. Luminance, uh, I'm going to leave it no luminance, uh, not illuminated for now. But as you can see, you can you can set uh, settings for like a uh, dim glow or cell phone screen, uh, etc., which can be useful if you want to have a TV, let's say, and, and put a, an image on the TV. You could, do, you could use this, you know, uh, and etc. Okay. We'll come back maybe and, and, and change that. Okay. So we set that to A4 size, didn't we? So let's see what size is the image. So we created the type. Now we can just create the decal. Kids photo. Uh, it was rotated actually, so the width is actually the height. And I'll make that 297. Okay. And hover over the face of the canvas. Escape, escape. Put it in here. I'm going to have to rotate it. First of all, I'm going to change my visual style to realistic. See, there, there's our photo. It's getting, it's getting cool now, right? Let's move it in and rotate it 90 degrees. Okay. So uh, I'm going to change the size of that again with the decal selected. So the height is actually the width, so I'll change that to 210 because I know that's what our canvas is. I'm going to use a line and lock, okay? Line to the canvas, lock. And same at the bottom, lock. Now, our photo is 280 high, okay? So I'm going to change my frame, select the frame, edit, type, and change the height to 280. Okay? Ah, perfect. All right. Now, let's Enscape or resume live, and we're going to have a look at that. Right, isn't that cool? Let me just raise that canvas up a little bit there. Maybe 1500 high level. Okay. And back into Enscape. Okay. Pretty cool, huh? Now, let's change the time of day to nighttime. Let's move this guy up. Actually, the time here, right? So it's nighttime. So it's, see that it's it's gone, right? So I'm going to go back into the project and give that some backlighting. Uh, minimize. So we ch we change it in decal type, okay? Because uh, we've created the type, so we don't change it here in the image. So back into insert decal types. You may have several in your project, so select the one we just we're working on. And I'm going to change the luminance to 
let's say dim glow, some kind of a backlit light frame thing. Okay, and back into Enscape. Now let's change the time of day again in a moment. Down. Okay, see, it's night time, and there it is, it's backlit. Now if we go back and change this to, let's say, Luminous, change it to a screen, you see it's different again, okay? So, uh, cell phone screen, okay? Okay, back into Enscape. You see it's, it's shining like a screen does, okay? Pretty cool. <laughs> okay. All right, listen, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it's useful in some way. Uh, if if you don't need to use this application, obviously, this is probably kind of a one-off, but you use the same ca application for uh, decals and uh, on maybe a glazed panel for, for uh, manifestations or whatever. Uh, again, hope you found it useful. And if you, you know, if you did, give it a like and appreciate all the subscriptions and share it and all that stuff. Okay, listen, thanks guys.